What's going on guys and welcome to the next episode of the Crack -a Pack series. Today we're opening up a relatively new set, uh, Rivals of Ixalan. So this is obviously still in standard, so there are actually a few decently high dollar cards in here. Rekindling Phoenix sitting at the top at $32. Uh, the Immortal Sun is right at $17. There's Jade Light Ranger. There's the Kama. There are actually a number of good things in this set, so I'm hoping to get something awesome. Uh, of course, we'll look at this from a limited environment, so we'll do the best we can to figure out what our pack one, pick one would actually be if we were drafting this set. Uh, I can't promise that I will pick the right card, but I did actually really enjoy drafting this set, so I will definitely do the best I can. So, let's kick it off. Our first common here is Crashing Tide. Uh, it's a sorcery for two and a blue. Uh, it has flash as long as you control a merfolk, and it returns target creature to its owner's hand and draws a card. This is actually pretty okay no matter what. Uh, if you're in a blue deck, this is just a tempo play. Uh, and so for that reason, it works out. It replaces itself. It bounces something that's pretty good. Uh, obviously, there's random upside if you're in a merfolk deck. So if you do control a merfolk, which there are plenty of in this set, uh, then this has flash. So it becomes an instant, which makes it that much better. Uh, this is not a first pickable card necessarily, but it's definitely a powerful card. Uh, one that I wouldn't mind playing in most blue decks. Uh, Stampeding Horncrest is a 4-4 four, four for 4 and a red. It has haste as long as you control another dinosaur. Again, this whole set was based off of tribal synergies. Dinosaur, Merfolk, uh, Vampire I believe was also in this one. There were quite a number of them. Uh, dinosaurs in draft were like extraordinarily powerful in my opinion. There were kind of two schools of thought. There was sort of the green red uh, big stompy dudes or there was the Boros kind of dinosaur aggro and then you can kind of combine them uh, to get sort of the the Naya basic uh, color combination. This is just kind of a fine okay five drop. It's a little under par to be honest at 4-4 four, four. Uh, but if you do control another dinosaur which most likely you will at that point uh, it does have haste, so it can get in for some damage. I don't like this card too much, though, to be honest. Uh, Sun Sentinel is fairly straightforward, a 2-2 for 1 and a white with Vigilance, but this is actually a very on-par creature. Pretty solid. Uh, I don't mind this in any uh, just sort of white Boros, again, kind of aggro style deck. Uh, this is perfectly fine. Not necessarily first pickable, though. Uh, Plummet, 1 and a green for an instant. Destroy target creature with flying. This is a really classic card. Uh, I like it a lot as well. Uh, it's something that like you don't necessarily want to main board because there are going to be issues, uh, especially if you're against like a Merfolk deck or something like that, where your creature or the opponent's creatures are just not going to have flying. Uh, but that being said, there are a number of them that do, and so having access to this in a sideboard is just an um, extraordinarily good removal. Uh, it's absolutely fantastic in those situations. So I don't mind picking these up. Again, though, not first pick. Uh, Dusk Charger is a 3-3 three, three for 3 and a black. It has a sin, so if you control 10 or more, more permanents, you get the City's Blessing for the rest of the game. Uh, keep in mind, you also can't remove the City's Blessing. I don't believe there's actually a way to do that. Uh, Dusk Charger gets plus 2, plus 2, as long as you have the City's Blessing, so in some cases it will be a 5-5. Five, five. Uh, this is really kind of just Curve Filter. I'm not a huge fan of this card. Uh, most of the time it's going to be a 3-3. Three, three. You do very often uh, trigger the City's Blessing with the Ascend triggers. Uh, it's not too difficult to do that, especially in Limited where things kind of stall out a bit sometimes. If you're going to, you might even just get there off of your land drops. Uh, so you probably will get it at some point, but even at best this is just a 5-5 five, five, uh, vanilla creature then. And like, that's fine. It's a serviceable beater for sure, but in general, not that exciting. Uh, Secrets of the Golden City, 1 and 2 blue for a sorcery, again with Ascend. Uh, it says draw 2 cards, if you have the City's Blessing, you draw 3 cards instead. Uh, that's actually really good in terms of efficiency, so it's, on the face of it, it's a little bit worse uh, than Divination, because you do have to pay 2 blue, not just 1. Uh, but, obviously, at best, it's draw 3 for 3, which is pretty good. Uh, that being said, card draw is not necessarily something I like first picking, especially in sort of a standard draft en environment. Uh, certainly in cube or something like that, if you get some insane draw spell, you take it, but uh, in this case, not so much. Uh, Till and Ali's Crown is an enchantment for one and a red enchant creature. Uh, when it enters the battlefield, it deals one damage to the enchanted creature, uh, and that creature gets plus three plus zero oh, and has trample. This is an interesting card, so I actually didn't get to play with this as much as I would have liked. Uh, I've heard horror stories and I've heard sort of the best case scenario, uh, which 
in some cases because there is a mechanic and i don't remember what it's called right off the bat i think it's rampage or something like that enrage uh, i'm not sure but uh if a creature is dealt damage it gets an, an effect uh some of those are really really powerful in fact and so this card really synergizes well with those cards assuming it doesn't destroy that creature uh or kill that creature on the other hand, uh, you can also play it on something else and potentially kill it, which is either good or bad, depending on what you're enchanting. So uh, I don't know. I'm not a huge fan of this card, to be honest. Uh, but I've also, again, not really had much experience with it. Uh, Strider Harness, three cast artifact, equipment. The equipped creature gets plus one, plus one, and as haste. Uh, and the equipped creature, or the equipped cost, excuse me, is only one. Uh, this is a perfectly fine card in a very aggro deck. It's serviceable. It's not amazing, to be honest, but it does actually get there with some creatures, uh, especially if you're curving out at like four or something like that, and you want to be able to play those creatures and then swing in with them. Uh, as long as you have an extra land and this is already out, you'll, you'll be able to do that, uh, which is fantastic. It just lets you pile on the damage. That being said, not all that exciting, to be honest. Uh, Deadeye Rig Hauler, this is a great card. So a 3-2 for 3 and a blue, it has raids. So if it enters the battlefield, if you attacked with a creature this turn, you may return target creature to its owner's hand. Raid was kind of the pirate's mechanic, uh, which covered basically the Grixis uh, color pairings. This card is great in that deck. Uh, a lot of times you will be swinging in, it's a very aggro color uh, combination. Uh, and so for that reason, you'll be able to sort of tempo out your opponents. So far, this is by far the best card that I've seen uh, in this pack, and definitely the one I'd be most excited about picking at this point. Uh, Gruesome Fate, a sorcery for two and a black. Each opponent loses one life for each creature you control. Not a big fan of this card. Sometimes it comes in handy uh, if you're in a go-wide strategy, but that really isn't the most viable thing in this uh, environment, and so for that reason, really not that good. Uh, Curious Obsession is our first uncommon, an enchantment uh, for one blue enchant creature. Uh, it gets plus one plus one and has whenever this creature deals combat damage to a player you may draw a card at the beginning of your end step if you didn't attack with the creature this turn you sacrifice curious obsession really don't like this card uh it's interesting for sure there are instances where it's really good uh if you have unblockable merfolk something like that uh it's definitely fantastic but in general not really the best uh just a lot of setup enrage called it on the second try okay so needle tooth raptor uh, two two for three and a red uh, whenever it's dealt damage it deals five damage to target creature and opponent controls this card is very powerful uh, unfortunately it's a little bit slow uh, but it's basically just a big removal spell uh, that's sort of what it amounts to I do like this card I don't know if I like it more than the rig hauler but we'll put it to the side for now uh, forerunner of the coalition this is part of a cycle uh, there were some of these for basically every tribe uh, it's a two two for two and a black uh, and when it enters the battlefield, you may search your library for a pirate card, reveal it, shuffle your library, and put that card on top of it. Uh, whenever another pirate enters the battlefield under your control, each opponent loses one life. Uh, this is definitely a reason to be in the pirate stack. Uh, similar to the rig hauler, though, I would say this is probably better. Uh, it's very, like, it, it's going to be able to dig you out of positions because you're going to be able to pull whatever pirate you need for that given situation. Not only that, though, uh, you're going to be dealing incremental damage, which means because you're aggro already, hopefully this will pull out the last few points if need be. Uh, obviously, you hope to just be able to attack in and everything, but this card is fantastic. So far, I think this is going to be my pick. We do have our rare here. Uh, Awakened Amalgram. Uh, it's a forecast artifact. Uh, its power and toughness are equal to the number of differently named lands you control. I think this card is interesting. Um... <laughs> I don't like this card because in draft you're not really trying to go for tons of different colors. Uh, ideally what you want is like two, maybe three colors in this format, uh, or in this set, excuse me, because there, it's, there are splashes available to you in this set. Uh, but in general, this is probably only going to have, you know, three, maybe, uh, at max four, but at that point it's just a four, 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 <laughs> and like that's not very good. Uh, there are dual lands, so you will be able to trigger it off of that, but uh, in general, not a fan. I think my pick is the Forerunner of the Coalition. Uh, there are actually a couple good cards in here, though, so let me know in the comment section if you agree with that, or if you disagree, whatever. Uh, roast me in the comments if you'd like. But, guys, thank you so much for watching this episode of the Crackerback series. If you enjoyed it, please make sure to leave a like or a comment down below. As always, please make sure to subscribe, stay up to date on all of our awesome content, but with that, I'm going to get out of here. I will see you guys in the next Crack-A-Pack video.